Hello, my name is Larry Fowler, and I'm the founder of Legacy Coalition. Uh, today, I'm coming to you from our family room, where my wife and I are spending a lot of time these days because we're in self-isolation because of the coronavirus. I want to talk to you about uh, this topic right here. How do you build faithfulness in your volunteers? You know, I think that there's a person in the Bible that is the greatest recruiter and keeper of volunteers of all time. And I'm not talking about Jesus because, frankly, he has a he sets the standards a little bit above all of us. But there's an Old Testament character that just excels in this. It's Nehemiah. Remember that Nehemiah left Shushan the palace to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall there, and God called him to do that. He had some incredible obstacles to overcome, and it wasn't just the fact that the wall was broken down. There were other issues in recruiting and keeping volunteers that were significant, and I want you to see those as well. Uh, here, here are six things that he had to face. First of all, there was opposition. We read that first in, in chapter 2, verse 10, where it says that Sambalat and, and Tobiah didn't like what he was doing. And it goes from two people passive in their opposition all the way to chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, where the opposition had grown to whole armies being involved, and they were threatening the very lives of the workers. That is an incredible obstacle to overcome when you're trying to recruit and keep volunteers. Second thing that he faced was they were half done rebuilding the wall in chapter four. And I think halfway through any project is the most difficult point. Nehemiah was at that point when he faced the workers being ready to quit. You read about it in a little bit. In chapter four, verse 10, in the first part of the verse, the workers and the people around came to him and they said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decaying. In other words, everybody's really getting tired. You ever try to, to, to keep and retain tired workers or recruit them? Boy, that's tough. Uh, that was uh, an issue. They were fatigued, but not just that. They also had the wrong focus. In the middle of the verse, we read that they say, there's so much rubble. And you know, isn't it amazing? They're just like all of us. They were focusing, focusing on all the work there was still to do rather than on the half-built wall. They didn't say, look how much we got done. They said, look how much there is still to do. And that made it difficult as well to keep them engaged. Chapter 4, verse 10, the last phrase of the verse, they said, so we are not able to build the wall. In other words, they were giving up. And that's the kind of people that Nehemiah had to try to encouraged to be faithful and recruit and stay involved in ministry, but there's one more. Uh, they were terrified. Chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, we read that the enemy was threatening them, and even the people that lived around were coming to them, and they came to them 10 times and said, you got to stop building the wall. you got to stop. If you don't, you're going to get us all killed. And they were putting pressure on the workers, and it was that group of workers that Nehemiah motivated to get back to the work, back to work and to refinish uh, to to finish the job. In fact, they finished it in record time, as you maybe know from your understanding of the passage. Well, what did Nehemiah do to turn these people around? I think that he did six things that are principles that you and I can follow as we lead our workers and as we recruit them and and try to keep them involved in in the ministry. Six things that Nehemiah did. I want to go through them, and I trust that they'll be a help to you. Here's the first one. First thing that he did was he put families together. It says this in verse 13. I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places. Look at, look at this. Posting them by families. In other words, he had brothers working together and cousins and dads and sons, and he had all sorts of um, uh, situations, I'm sure, but he gathered them and, and had them work according to families. Why? Because we are mo more motivated to stay consistent and faithful when we are working alongside our family members. Think about your workers. Do you have a mom and daughter team that are assisting you or maybe a husband and wife? I'll guarantee you they are faithful. When we are involved with those that we love, we stay more faithful. That's a principle for you to remember. In fact, you might try to recruit that way. How about having a spouse day where all of your workers invite their spouses to just come in and watch what they're doing and, and help them? Or family day where family members come in, you might end up with a lot more workers. Second thing that he did is he renewed their focus. In verse 14, we read this. 
Nehemiah said, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. And those three little words, remember the Lord, are so important because he is taking their eyes off the rubble and he's putting their eyes back on the Lord. He had told them at the beginning, God will enable us to do this. And they had forgotten that. He's now reminding them, God can do it. And that's something that we need to stay, say, stay to our workers all the time. God can do this through us. God can enable us to be able to do this. And we get them to focus, stay focused on our Lord and Savior all the time. The next thing that he did was he made sure there was personal meaning in what they were doing. He says in the last part of verse 14, fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. Now it's interesting. They were building a wall. They weren't fighting. But Nehemiah gave it that interpretation. This is fighting. This building the wall is fighting. And we're doing it for the people that are most precious to us. You know, right now our whole nation is concerned about the coronavirus. Really, the whole world is concerned about the coronavirus. But you know who I'm most concerned about? My family. That's who I'm most concerned about. And so that, that reminder, that principle that we are more motivated by our families for anything is a, an important principle to remember as we're involved in, in uh, leading people. Uh, we need to make sure that this has personal meaning. That's what Nehemiah was doing. You know, people find personal meaning in ministry in many different ways, but we need to think through those and say, what can I do to make sure that my workers are finding personal meaning in what they're doing? They not only need to be giving out in ministry, they need to be taking in. And those workers that you have that not only put out, but they also receive something from the ministry that they're involved in. They receive encouragement. They receive love. They receive support. They, uh, whatever it is, that will encourage them to stay faithful. And then this one, equipped. Uh, in, verse, in the verses that follow, we find that Nehemiah equipped his, his workers on the wall. You see, they were being threatened with war, and all they had were tools. It says, from that day on, half my men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears and shields and bows and armor. And later on, he had them hold a tool in one hand and a weapon in the other. In other words, he equipped them for, for whatever they faced. As a ministry leader, you need to be asking your people all the time, what do you need? How can I help you? How can I make your job easier? In doing that, you will learn what they need to be equipped. And it's not just curriculum. It's in things like how to handle discipline problems, how to deal with, with upset parents or whatever it might be. You need, to, you need to equip them for all of those things. And then mutual support is the fifth thing that he did. He set up a system where if the enemy attacked one spot, the rest of the workers would immediately be at their back. He said, we're separated from each other along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. And so he set up this system to where they would come together and support one another. And that mutual support is so critical. If you are in a large church, there's a good chance that your workers don't know each other very well. And just like the family issue, people are much more likely to stay engaged in ministry when they feel like that they are friends with the other workers. So have times of fellowship, get them to know each other. The better they know each other, the more likely they are to stay involved. The last thing he did was this one, personal example. 23 is a funny verse. It says this, neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with me took off our clothes. <laughs> Why do we have to read in the Bible they didn't take off their clothes? What is the significance of that? Well, I think it's this. Nehemiah is saying, look, we work just as hard as anybody else. We weren't leaders up, up on the you know, an ivory tower, tower somewhere in our royal garments. We were down there working just like everybody else. And your personal example will be a significant, significant motivator to encourage people to not only join your ministry, but also to stay involved in it. You know, may God bless you greatly as you lead your ministry. Keep safe, keep well, and may God give you success in, in that thing that he's put up on your heart to do.